This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house. Amen. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me to heal the broken hearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the mind. Set at liberty, then but a bruise. Amen. The word is not thee. Even in your heart, then you bow. There's a word of faith which I preach. People confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. But with the heart, man believeth under righteousness. With the mouth, confession. It made under salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation to everyone who believes. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, as I shall live by his faith. Amen. Well, I welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream. Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, other devices, and shortwave radio. Amen. Thank God. Terry Brown goes present with me. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Kathy Davidson goes present with me. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. Catherine Courier present with me from Byers. Colorado. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Anthony Reese, Apostle, present on the set. Good evening. Good evening. Apostle Aaron Durger. I believe he's present. Yes, he is. Thank God. Amen. Led by the Holy Ghost to know that one. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Apostle Brian. Bonner, present. Good evening. Good evening. Apostle Paul Peters, present. Good evening. Good evening. Amen. I think I got all. Did 
to die. You got our our uh, control man. Oh my goodness! Is he here? <laughs> we better hope he is. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, David. Apostle David Casperite, present in the director's chair. Good evening. Good evening. He's here. Now, do we now bring the my girls in? Amen. Amen. Let's do Turn with me to 1 Corinthians 7. We've had a wonderful week here during the daily broadcasts, and we've had some real deliverance from people from, I think Monday we talked about the occult, 
and about denouncing things that we were involved in and God delivering us from those things. And I want to show you what is happening to here at Water of Life. If you will go with me, I said 1 Corinthians 6, and I'm going to read from verse 19. And I want us to look at this because there's some things in here. If we read into and meditate on these, we'll see some things that we may not have seen before. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which it you have of God, and you are not your own. You are not your own. For you are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. Did you know you were purchased? Do you know that you were bought? It says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. With that, turn with me to Acts 20. What were we bought with? What were we purchased by? Acts 20, verse 28. I believe this is Peter or, no, it's Paul. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God. And notice this next phrase, which he has purchased. The church of God, which he has purchased. With what? With his own blood. With his own blood. Did you know that you were purchased with the blood of Jesus? And we just read, you know that you are not your own. You belong now because of that blood. You belong to the Lord. You belong to the Lord, whether you like it or not. But you know what the wonderful thing about that is? You don't belong to the devil either. Amen. You don't belong to the devil. And he has no more authority in your body if you believe what that blood did for you. He has no more authority in your body. And when that Holy Ghost is moving in you and it wants to deliver you from that devil and that devil says, oh no, oh no, this is my home. You can tell him, oh no. Oh, no, I have been purchased with the blood of Jesus. Turn with me to Colossians 1. That was a wonderful thing to realize that the the devil had no more authority in my body, not because of anything I did, not because of my wonderful righteousness, not because of my pleasant personality. No, not because of my good looks, because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus, the devil has no more authority in my body if I will believe. All right. Colossians 1, 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet, able, able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Notice who makes us able. Not our righteousness. Who makes us able? Father. The Father, through Jesus, what a cooperation that those two did. What a cooperation that those two worked. One coming here to be our sacrifice and the other ready to receive it. Ready to receive the blood when that sacrifice was given. Ready to receive Jesus from hell so that all our sins would be forgiven. Next verse, who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Do you see that? Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Who has translated us? Was it what we did? No. It's what Jesus did. It's what the blood did. Next verse. In whom? In Jesus. We have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And that even isn't in there. The forgiveness of sins, sins. Redemption. You know what redemption is? It's a full payment of a ransom. It's a full payment. A full payment. Why can we get the the devil out of us? There was a full payment, a full ransom payment payment on us with that blood. And like I said, the cooperation, the father sent Jesus to be the sacrifice. The father sent Jesus to spill his blood. The father sent Jesus to be your ransom. And then he waited for Jesus to be raised from the dead. When he raised him up, Jesus came into heaven with his own blood and the payment was received. 
Your payment was already received. You don't have to convince anybody of anything except your own self. Now, when we worship, believe that. Push in. Get that devil off of you. You don't have to put up with him one more day. Amen? Amen? I'm ready to open the floor. Would you read what I used to pray hours oh, yeah. after hours? And taught us to pray it too. The what? And taught us to pray it too. Amen. That's what brought this house to have people in it. And then they didn't want to be here. They wanted to love the world and they went after the world and they're filled with the world and they still are and they have to be redeemed again Amen. they have to be uh, prayed for again I have to travail again Galatians 4 night pain and they wonder how much fun I have. Oh, you sweet little darlings. <laughs> Would you read that? Right, verse 13. Who has delivered us? I know, Who has? Uh, right. And you have said, Father, I thank you. That we have been delivered from the power of darkness Amen. and been translated into the kingdom of his dear son Amen. in whom we have redemption through Amen. his blood, even the forgiveness Amen. of sins. Forgiveness of sins. Amen. Amen. Read that again. Please. Thank you, Father that I have been delivered from the power of darkness oh, yes. and have been translated into the kingdom of his dear, oh, your yes. dear son in whom I have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Get a three by five card and put that on, on it until you can get it in your heart and your mind and you don't need notes. Amen. And pray it for yourself till you turn redeemed. <laughs> oh, if you think I'm not warmed up, you're mistaken. You're mistaken. You know, when you've been told one lie after another one, one lie after another one, And you're accused of false, false words. And you just roll with it. I take it. And then God shows you you haven't born false with but the person has lied to you many times, many, many, many times. And I guess with a straight face, try to convince me otherwise. And I suppose you could, because I don't see you, but I will. Amen. In whom? In whom? Coach me a little. <laughs> Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? What? Who hath delivered us? He hath delivered us from the power of darkness. All right, come right. on. And has translated us. Translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption. Is that right? That's right. Even the full of the forgiveness of sins. Redemption um, through his blood. Oh, thank you. I'm about to get this back. I'll practice it. <laughs> you know, the devil took that out of my heart. Did you know I was at one time, one heart and one soul? Oh, yeah. 
Corinthians, what is that, Acts 4, 31 or 2? Yes. What art and what soul? That was the church, yes. Huh? Yes, that was the church. Yeah. And guess what? The devil, the devil stole my soul by punishing you. My soul with lies, wicked words. Oh, I forgive them all. Thank God, forgive them all. But remember, you still lied. You know, Jesus dealt with a woman in the Bible. I'm not sure where it's at, Matthew or John, that was taken in the adultery, the very act. John. John, John was it? Yeah. Is that nine? Eight. Eight? Okay. That's why you're here. You can read nine and ten years. And Jesus said, Does anyone condemn me? No one. Neither do I. But go, and I'll get this, and sin no more. Amen. Oh, he said I sinned. Yes, and you did. And he didn't condemn me in part, but he said, don't sin anymore. Amen. Well, I'm telling Somebody stop lying to me and don't lie anymore. Amen. Amen. Anybody want to talk? Well, when I see that prayer in Colossians, I prayed that prayer as well. Having heard you pray it, I have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all authority of the devil been translated to the kingdom of your dear son and whom I have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. I've heard you pray that, and you prayed that, I believe, when you were in Argyle. Oh, yeah. And you prayed that often, and what you were doing is you were praying through your own redemption and sanctification. Yes, sir. And so I got a hold of that. The Lord got that in my heart, ministered that to me, that I could pray that prayer. Yes, sir. And I could keep praying it, and that would be effective in the same way in my life as when you prayed at Norgal. Yes. But I've got even more than that. Because I have somebody praying for me out of Acts 26, which is the same prayer. Amen. It's the same prayer, Acts 26, verse um, 17. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles whom I now send thee. Verse 18. To open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So you have been praying that prayer for some time now. Yeah. I know that I can mix my faith with the prayer in Colossians, and somebody here praying that prayer in Acts 26 for me, and be sanctified, justified, for, receive the forgiveness of sins, and receive my inheritance. Amen. And I've been praying that prayer I have in my life. Amen. Amen. And my eyes are on fire. Thank God, but I'm coming out. Amen. Was that the prayer that you prayed one day 500 times? No. Is that Colossians 1? Yeah. No. Okay. It had something to do with redemption. What? It had something to do with redemption, right? No. Oh, okay. Forgive me. I said, I went to Louisville from McKinney, trade of ours. And I said, I'm righteous 500 times. <laughs> what I didn't do was add my faith in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I didn't pray the prayer complete. 
You know, that Acts 26, Anthony, that you just read, talks about the inheritance in the saints. It talks about that also right there in Colossians 1, in verse 12, before uh, talking about delivered us from the power of darkness. It says, give thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Amen. Glory. Amen. Where we at it? What are we doing next? Well, one more comment about Jesus telling the woman to go and sin no more. You've talked about this before, too, as well, I believe, comparing it with, like, the man uh, that Jesus, he had a withered arm, and Jesus said, stretch forth your arm. Right. The power of God renewed that man's arm, and the, that same power was in those words spoken to that woman, go Amen. and sin no more. Because probably everybody here can tell you, you've had some times you decide you're not going to sin, and you still do, because when you go under that law and say, I will not, you surely do, but it's the power of God working in you through the gospel. It's that power that you're able to sin no more. It's the same power that regenerated the man's arm. I think that's beautiful. Jesus put the faith in that woman's heart and so to sin no more. Amen. Amen. And what I believe it was the, um, I, I don't know if it was the one that was born by four or the one at Bethesda, but Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto you. I mean, was it John? Oh, okay. Go ahead and read it, Paul. Uh, yeah. John chapter 5, there is a, a man who had an infirmity for 38 years. And Jesus said to him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. So John 8, Jesus only said, Go and sin no more. But here he's telling the man, Sin no more, lest a worse thing thing come under thee, a worse thing than an infirmity of 38 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't speak that on me. Ha. Amen. Amen. Jesus was putting faith and righteousness in that person. Amen. Amen. Where are we at? We ready to Worship and have some redemption? I am. Amen. Are you? I'm ready. Let's go. Oh, clap your hands. Praise 
that gathered back. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord, Amen. thank God. Amen. Blessed be Amen. the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Glory, Amen. honor, Amen. power. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Mercy. Amen. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Mercy. Grace. Be both applied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Amen. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.